Fair enough. Let's fix that. Welcome back to Lizard of Doom. I am Max. Before we get into today's video, we have hit 10,000 subscribers, which I didn't think we'd hit till the end of the year. So the special for that will come out around then. But thank you so much to everyone here and everyone who's been with me from the start. Love you. And if you're not subscribed, maybe watch this video. If you liked it all, subscribe then. Or now, if you're impulsive like me. Today I'll be making female Guayvesa. I will not be making just another strike team. I will be making Vespids. This is normally an alien race, part of the Tau, but this time I'm making human ones as everything in my Tau army is human or human piloted. Does that make sense? So without further ado, let's get into it. Give my like button a little tickle before we go there. Oh yes, thank you. And let's go. To start the kit bash, I would be using Palanite Enforcers, but this time I'd be using the Riot Shield variant. This is so the armor matches the other ones, but the shield can account for the Vespid's extra toughness and count as their carapace skin, really. The human heads would be from this Cities of Sigmar Free Guilds box. There are various unhelmeted female heads. I did look at Cadians, but there are too many helmets. I wanted these bare female heads to go on my Guevesa. There are lots of different options. These Free Cities new boxes are great for diversity and gender and different body types. Once I had built those Palanite Enforcers with the shields, there was a little bit of work to do. You can see this one here is the standard with shield. This big shield is a lovely round area for a nice towel transfer. But there is a couple of little changes you might notice with some of the other ones on the table behind it. For instance, this one has had his neck removed. These guys have massive Adam's apples and massive necks. This neck has been removed so I can fit the heads later on. And this one doesn't have a shield. We'll be coming back to this one in a minute. This one's going to be something special, not a Vespid, because there are only five in a Vespid squad. Now let's talk about the head fitting issue on these guys. I have never come across two less compatible kits to put the heads on. These massive necks with Adam's apples do not mesh well with the massive ball joints of the Free Cities kit. This was going to be quite a lot of work just to get these heads on here. The way I would do that is just to cut away with a scalpel at the neckline here. What I'm going to try and do is make it look like the collar on the Free Cities head is the collar of their suit underneath. This is going to be a challenge and hopefully I can pull it off. They've got the same kind of slit up the middle of their neckline so it is possible I think. Let me do a bit of work and we'll find out. I clipped away as much as I could easily then scraped away with the scalpel. This was the only real way to get in there. I wish I had a little Dremel, that may be my next purchase, it would be very useful for the kit bashing. Once I had attached the heads, this is what we're left with. The towel helmets on the right there are just onto the necks. The necks weren't really a problem for them as seen in the last video. But the female heads, I think I've got away with it. I think it's going to look like the jumpsuit is connected. They'll all be in the paint job though. I was concerned that these heads may be a little small on the body. The jumpsuit neckline seems to be working, but when I looked at the size of the body underneath, so the shoulders about here, and then the width of the body coming through here, I think these heads are actually the right size. And it's just the chunky armor that's making me feel like they're too small. Now you may be wondering how I'm going to make these into Vespids, because Vespids are, again, these winged creatures. Well, I have found a free file online, which I'll link down below. This is a free file for 3D printing, obviously. I have sent it to my friend to 3D print for me because I don't have a printer. And we have a little bit of an issue. These little files printed a little bit wrong. They're gonna have to do for today, but as you can see, they're little chunks out of the bottom left fin here and there are also chunks out the bottom of the other one. This is to do with where the connection points were. They will be reprinted for the final painting video. But just to give you an idea of what those things will look like for that video, I'm gonna press ahead with these because I haven't got the time to get them reprinted for now. These guys have a slight difference in their backpacks. Can you see the one on the right has been shaved flat at the top there. This is to give me a nice little contact point where I can put these resin jetpacks on. A little dab of super glue one resin jetpack thingamajig, very tower looking. Just got to position it right, making sure it's the right angle for the shoulders is how I position them because the heads can be tilted to the side. 
And here we have some kind of dragonfly jetpack looking human Guayvesa. This will be a lovely counts for my Vespids in this team. I was excited to get some Vespids because I like that they can go back into Deep Strike after they've come out of it. Now we just have to deal with the arm and the weapons. I like the idea that Tau Tech is actually incredibly light and humans can wield it with less of an issue than Tau. So whereas Tau normally have two hands on a gun and have to shoulder them, the humans could probably fire from the hip because it's all like lightweight plasticky gear that they can just throw around with their human bulk compared to the smaller Tau frames of their race. So I took some guns from the Pathfinder team that I used to make my other human Tau's and used the kind of shorter stockier guns rather than the rifles for the Vespids because I thought they were more fitting. And look at that. Perfect. Just needed a slight little bit of scraping on the shoulder so it fitted under that shoulder pad. But this slotted in perfectly. Just a little dot of plastic glue to hold that together and we will be all there. But there's something I've got to deal with first before I glue this in. Now the shoulder pads, these are indeed meant to go on the other side, on this side, but the shield there is going to cause an issue. So I'm just going to move them to the other side. I know they're on the wrong side. Do I care? Not really. They fit less well over these shoulder pads than they did over the other Palanite Enforcer shoulder pads. So these would need a little trim. Just a slight scrapage each side with the scalpel to take the corners off and then it would fit nice and snugly over the top with the dome shape of the underside of the towel pad. Don't worry, this blade is relatively blunt. I'm not jabbing a fresh scalpel into my thumb. I always cut myself when I put a new blade on. That's why I prefer to use a slightly blunted one. It's better for scraping and it's better for my own safety. One completed trooper for the Vespid Squadron. Time to do this on all of the rest of them. Oh, wait a minute, I've done it on all of the rest of them. I like how the humans look holding this in one hand. I think they do indeed look like they could hip fire these weapons, whereas the Tau have to shoulder them. The human heads have worked well and it's just gonna be a matter of painting the collars to match the underneath jumpsuit. And they're gonna be black, so that is gonna be quite easy to do, hopefully. So it'll be nice to hide that line in between the neck and the body. They need an extra finger though. When I put an extra finger on the last batch of Guayvesa, loads of people in the comments said, you could have just said they were wearing a glove where they put two fingers in one hole, or they could have cut their fingers off as an initiation ritual to join the towel. But imagine if I'd have said that, how many people would have said, um, you left it with three fingers actually, and um, yes, it's not correct. So. I'm not really doing this for anyone. I'm not doing this for either way. I want them to have four fingers. You should always build your models how you want to. And for all the unmatchlies that corrected me and went, I'm actually, humans have five. You know what I mean, mate. <laughs> I'm not counting the thumb. I know a thumb is a finger. God damn it, just be nice in the comments. Once I had put that on, it was time to move on. Everyone in this squad either got a pinky finger or an index finger depending on how they were holding their gun, whichever looked right at the time. The pinky finger was usually by far the easiest to do. Just a little dob of green stuff, just to widen the palm and put a little sausage wrapped around the handle of the gun. Now let's talk about that extra model that I sidelined earlier. This is going to be the HQ of my army. It's gonna be a cadre fireblade. Now, because this is a female towel video, guess what? She's gonna be female. Proving that in the 41st millennia, it's not just all big buff blokes running around. There are strong independent women, just like your mum. A nice one this week. This is she. She will be my leader. She'll be the HQ of the army. The head is already in place. This was my favorite head out of the female heads in that box. And it's time to give her some arms. I've looked up the HQ's gear. So let's put on what she needs. First of all, she needs a melee weapon. This was taken from the other Palanite Enforcers box. The Lieutenant in there has this little power mace thing, which I really like. It's like a stun baton. This fitted on easily, obviously, because it's a Palanite kit. They all kind of go together. The other arm was going to be a little bit more difficult. I chose a pistol because she needs a pistol and a rifle from the towel set. So this towel pistol arm, which kind of fitted under there. It did need a little trim. I did take a little bit off with the scalpel. In the end, I did aim it more down towards the side like she was carrying it by her hip, 
and did fill a little bit under our armpit with green stuff just to make it look better because you could see the gap. One of the challenges I would face would be putting the gun on this model, the rifle. There is one rifle in the towel box which is not attached to anything, it's just a bare rifle, no hands, no straps, nothing. So that would be my best option for putting the rifle on here. But first, I'll do the shoulder pad. Now this is going on the correct side rather than the Vespids having it on the other side because this Cadre Fireblade will be going with my strike team which is the blokes I made in the last video. So I wanted her to kind of match and line up with them. This is a different shoulder pad from that box, but this will denote her apart from the squad. She is the leader of this army. She is their general. Once that was on, she's looking quite good. The gun was going to slot here in between the shoulder pad and the backpack piece of the Palanite's armor. A little bit of glue in here and some rough positioning just to get it in a place I was happy with. Then I would do something a little bit different with it. This doesn't look like it's attached so it needs a strap to hold it on. The strap is going to have to go over her shoulder and under her arm. I did this by simply cutting out a long rectangular piece of green stuff and attaching it to the top of the rifle round there, hiding it under her arm and then you don't really see it coming out the back. But this looks fine. This is going to look like a leather strap where this gun is held on to her shoulder. And with that, our cadre fireblade is complete. What do you think? Do you like my human towel conversions? Is this something that you would think about doing in the future? Let me know in the comments. Now we go into the final reveals and a little bit of lizard lore. And as this has been a female centric video, it was only right that I reached out to someone like my friend Eve, who was willing to record the lizard lore for me this week. So thank you, Eve. And here is that. Incoming transmission from Cadre Fireblade Thorpe. I used to be Commander Sophie Thorpe, Commander of Amican Law Enforcement. But as my colleague told you, since they came, there's no crime anymore, so I've been reassigned. I am now the Cadre Fireblade of the Amican First Loyalists. Fireblade Thorpe. That takes a bit of getting used to. After the warp storms that cut our arm of the galaxy off finally relented, the Tau were able to get through and save us from the brink of collapse. They ask a lot of us in return, but we've risen to the occasion. We're now the tip of the spearhead, plunging further into the recently revealed territories. We've made contact with a few more lost planets. They're all ex-Imperial cut off by the storms. Some willingly join in need of aid, but some would rather wait for the Emperor to return his blessings to them. These fools will be dealt with accordingly. I just hope they don't expect us to retake our neighbouring planet, Discar. They've fallen further into the depravity than I thought they could. No scouting party has ever returned from there. End of transmission. So thank you to my lovely Patreons who you saw over those reveals. If you would like to join and help support this kit bashing, I mean there was three kits that went into that, it ain't cheap, so the link will be up here now shablam and you can join and help from as little as three pounds you can help support me in this channel and show me that this is a worthwhile thing that people enjoy so if you don't want to do that you can also subscribe for free obviously it's youtube you know how it works leave a little comment for the algorithm that's been going fantastically so far we've been commenting as a community algorithm just the word algorithm how about this week we comment the word schmeepfuls uh, <laughs> you tell me how you think that's spelled in the comments <laughs> Why are you frowning behind the camera? Weird. <laughs> I know it's weird. That's the point. That's the point. That is all from me this week. And remember, it is not a pile of shame. It's a pile of future fun. See you next time, kids. And thank you for 10k subs. Love you. <laughs>